Well, it appears as if the Senate has reached a deal on the Biden administration's $1.9 trillion COVID relief package. However, um, Joe Biden has chosen to cave all because two centrist Democrats, conservative Democrats, have chosen to deny even more relief to their constituents. Now, debate is going to be taking place on this. It's already happening as we speak, likely. And um, this is deeply frustrating. It's not just bad policy. It's also really bad politics. The optics here are just, they're terrible. So as Jake Johnson of Common Dreams reports, in the face of pressure from a faction of conservative Senate Democrats, President Joe Biden reportedly agreed Wednesday to limit eligibility for direct relief payments by accelerating the phase out of $1,400 checks proposed in the emerging $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief package. Under the new eligibility structure, according to the Washington Post, individuals earning $75,000 or less annually and couples earning $150,000 or less will still receive the full $1,400 payments as proposed by the relief package passed by the House last week. But under the latest framework pushed by conservative Democrats and accepted by Biden, the phase out of the $1,400 checks will end at $80,000 for individuals and $160,000 for joint filers, meaning individuals and couples who earn more will receive nothing, not even partial payments. The House bill proposes ending the phase out at $100,000 in yearly income for individuals and $200,000 for couples. Among the Senate Democrats who pushed for the quicker phase out were Senators Joe Manchin and Gene Shaheen, of course. So that's still a pretty high income threshold, right? So how many people in actuality will this affect? Well, quite a bit. Because as Jeff Stein of the Washington Post explains, this compromise will result in roughly 12 million fewer adults and 5 million fewer children receiving the benefit, with about 280 million Americans overall still remaining eligible. So what that amounts to is 17 million fewer Americans getting checks that Biden promised checks to. Now, if you don't already understand why this is bad um well it's bad because now it is literally the case that trump if he were to run against biden in 2024 he could correctly brag that he sent checks to more people than joe biden and aoc made this point in a tweet arguing conservative democrats have fought so the biden administration sends fewer and less generous relief checks than the trump administration did it's a move that makes little to no political or economic sense and targets an element of relief that is most tangibly felt by everyday people an own goal we have a responsibility to show people in this country what a democratic majority can do for working people that means more generous relief checks 15 dollars minimum wage ending the filibuster to protect our democracy it's a once in a generation shot and we need to legislate like it and she's absolutely correct and what liberals will try to do as they advocate for more means testing is they're going to say well look do you really want rich people to be getting these checks because clearly you know a couple who makes uh two hundred thousand or in this case one hundred sixty thousand dollars per year they're doing okay and yes that's correct but here's the issue with means testing it takes longer and it doesn't account for changes in someone's income. So a couple who was making $160,000 the year prior may not be making that now. And so you're denying relief to them based on what may be an outdated economic situation that they find themselves in. And furthermore, if you just make these checks universal, you send them out immediately. No time needed to, you know, distinguish between people who qualify, people who are eligible. And in the event people shouldn't qualify and they make too much money, then you can just easily tax them the following year based on their income. Like, why do all the hard work now? Do it later. Just prioritize getting money in people's hands. That's the issue with means testing. So I want to recap, like, where we started and where we've gone. So it started out with Joe Biden promising $2,000 checks immediately. Then they moved the goalpost to $1,400 checks. And then they moved the goalpost again to $1,400 checks, like sometime in March, hopefully. We'll cross our fingers. And then Joe Biden said the $1,400 checks would be means tested. And now those $1,400 means tested checks have more eligibility requirements. I mean, this is such bad politics. The optics here are absolutely terrible. 
And it's indefensible, really. Anyone who's trying to defend this, they're not serious people. I just, I don't know what to say. Like, to go back on a promise that you just made, voters are not going to forget about this. They're going to remember this. They're going to remember that your word doesn't mean anything. So if Joe Biden chooses to run run for president again or whoever it is in 2024, if they make really bold promises, voters are going to think, oh, wait, I shouldn't take you seriously because you literally lied to us right after you got elected, right after the Georgia runoff races were over. You lied. You changed the story immediately like that. So why should I take you seriously? Why should I come out to vote for you? That's the issue here. So the point that AOC makes is absolutely sound. And if Democrats are truly wanting to keep power and not get blown out in 2022, they should listen more to people like AOC and listen less to idiots like Joe Manchin and Gene Shaheen who don't actually care about their constituents. They don't actually care about doing anything to deliver relief to the American people. If Joe Manchin had his way, he wouldn't even give out checks. So stop listening to people like Joe Manchin who are bringing the party down. If you truly want to help the American people, disregard these people, or for once, maybe fight them. Make the case, like Joe Biden is the president of the United States. But why does it seem like Joe Manchin is the most powerful politician in America? Like, why is it that Joe Biden caves to any and all demands issued by Joe Manchin? You're the president, fight him, argue, at least make the case. I mean, this is embarrassing, but it's not necessarily surprising. It's it's pretty predictable. It's just that, like, you usually don't fuck up this badly if you want to win re-election until, like, maybe at least a year into your presidency. But Joe Biden is, um, he's not up to the challenge. I've said this once. I'll say it again. He's not up to the challenge. And every single day, he proves me right. And I don't want to be proven right. I want him to prove me wrong here because I don't necessarily care about being proven right or wrong. I just want people to get the relief that they need, that you promised them. You know, you, you, you know, you know the, you know the thing. You're getting nervous, man.